Hello, brothers and sisters. Juan Cordova here, recording secretary with TW Local 555. I uh, just want to let you guys know, and uh, we're here going to do our third podcast. Uh, very excited today to do it with uh, District uh, 6 Rep, T Tyler Clough. Um, and, and we're just going to ask him uh, what he's about, what he what he does, uh, what he does for our members, and uh, just the basic question of what a district rep is. Um, so with that, I'm passing it to, Ky uh, to Kyle. Hey, Tyler. How are you doing? How are you doing today? I'm doing well. How are you? Pretty good, man. Thank you so much for joining us um, with the Education Committee here in the podcast. Um, like, like Juan said, we just want to kind of get to know you a little bit better, um, know your job a little bit better. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, pass it along to you and just introduce yourself and, and give kind of the members uh, a bit of a summary of what your job entails and what you do on a day-to-day -day basis and that kind of stuff. So you can go ahead and, and talk to the members for us. Okay. All right. Well, to start off, like Juan said, uh, I'm Tyler Clough. I'm the district rep for District 6, uh, which is pretty much the southwest uh, part of the country. I've got cities in West Texas, New Mexico, Arizona, and Southern California. Mm -hmm. uh, I am, and I am a 26-year empl employee with Southwest Airlines. Mm -hmm. uh, all of that has been in the Phoenix station, so I'm out nice. of Phoenix. Uh, I've been on the ramp for... Uh, most of that time, about seven years of that, I was also in the provisioning department. Uh, but as a district representative, I've been a district representative. I actually was the alternate district representative starting in 2015 uh, for Kevin Carney. And then in 2016, I became the district representative uh, for District 6. Mm -hmm. uh, some of the basic things that I do, I do a lot of grievance handling, uh, as well as uh, station visits, uh, talking to the members. I work a lot with uh, local representatives, uh, also attend board meetings, um, and uh, just taking part of the general business of the local and making sure things get done in District 6. It sounds, it sounds like a, a lot. Sounds like a lot, um, especially in that in that area. Would you say like Phoenix is is the the biggest like station that you you handle most of your grievances from, or what? Well, I, I handle grievances out of all of my cities, but yes, uh, obviously the bigger the station, mm -hmm. typically the more grievances come out of those stations. So, out of my district, Phoenix and San Diego are my two biggest cities, and. So naturally, most of my grievances come out of Phoenix and San Diego, but I have received grievances from every one of my uh, 10 cities from, you know, the biggest of Phoenix all the way to the smallest of mm -hmm. uh, Lubbock and Midland, Texas. Well, well, speaking of Phoenix, we got two Phoenix members here on the uh, Education Committee podcast. We got Mark and Nathan, and I think Mark also wanted to ask you a couple of questions. Hey, Tyler, Mark Waddle here. How are you? I'm doing well, Mark. Wonderful. Hey, so you said you are the, and we know this, the District 6 uh, representative. How many members do you have in your district and what, how many number of cities do you have in there? Well, there's 10 total cities in District 6. Uh, like I said, from West Texas to Southern California. And currently, uh, after the VSP, uh, we have just over 1,600 members in our district. We were over uh, 1,700 prior to the VSP. Well, right. So we cool. lost quite a few do uh, is that pretty much even throughout the whole system of all of our districts about 16 1700 uh yeah as far as the membership is concerned i think district 6 is now kind of more towards the the smaller of the eight districts but yes um the last time the districts were realigned which was prior to uh, me becoming the district rep in 2016 uh that was the goal to try and put you know the same amount of cities and roughly the same amount of membership in each district. Right on. Thank you very much. Jay. Hey, Todd, this is Jay Fennell from Las Vegas. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Jay. Hey, my question to you is when the agent does a grievance, what can you describe the general process of how the grievance goes? Uh, yeah, certainly. Uh, so once a member files a grievance, uh, there's two steps that happen at the local level. Um, and sometimes in the smaller station, those two steps can happen with the exact same manager, but there's supposed to be two different managers that review the grievance. Once it leaves the station or, or there's no resolution at the station, it then gets forwarded to the district rep, which uh, for District 6 would be me. Uh, I then handle the grievance and I have uh, some steps that I would go through, but typically 
I work with the labor relations department and headquarters uh, because just like district reps have a certain amount of cities uh, that they represent, uh, the company has labor managers that are assigned to a certain city. So each city has a, has a specific labor relation manager assigned to it. And depending on what city my grievance comes out of, I'll then start working with that labor manager to try and resolve the grievance. If we can't resolve the grievance, uh, then there's hearings that can be set up to try and resolve the grievance through either a system board an arbitration or for disciplinary grievances that don't involve termination, uh, what we call a mediation arbitration process where we'll arbitrate a grievance, but we'll try to mediate a settlement prior to hearing uh, an actual ruling uh, from the arbitrator. So that's, that's the grievance process in a nutshell. Oh, that's interesting. I just want to, what would you say would be the most important thing that a grievant or a rep of a local rep can help you to do your job? Well, um, as with any grievance, um, coming from a district rep who handles the grievances at the end of the process as they would go into hearings of system boards or arbitration or mediation arbitration, uh, I always look at a grievance from the very beginning as if it's going to go to arbitration. Now, Granted, only a very small percentage of grievances end up in an arbitration setting. Uh, however, having the mindset of every grievance is going to end up in front of an arbitrator is a good way to, uh, um, to approach a grievance. And so think of all the things that you would need to, to prove your grievance in front of an arbitrator. And so at the very beginning of the grievance process is when most of the information is going to be remembered or easily uh, collected, whether it be uh, Otis printouts, uh, gate lead reports, uh, loading summary reports, um, transfer driver reports, all those type of things, because most people know that information on Otis is only there for a certain amount of time, and then it'll go away. Mm -hmm. And if we didn't collect that information at the beginning of the grievance process, a lot of times it's very, very difficult to obtain that information. So it's always very, very helpful to get statements, um, you know, flight paperwork information, uh, all that kind of stuff, get copies of that so that we have it because many of that stuff can be invaluable in the grievance process if it goes further along in the grievance process. Well, thank you very much. Good morning, Tyler. This is Nate Manigal out of Phoenix. How are you doing? I'm doing well, Nate. That's good to hear. So uh, how often would you say that you talk to your local reps in your district? Well, Nate, um, thank you for asking that question. And you being a rep in the Phoenix station, uh, you know as well as anybody that uh, I talk to the reps uh, quite a bit. Uh, and I have a very good relationship with all of the reps in, in my district, e even from the smallest cities to the biggest cities. And you'd be surprised. You'd think that maybe nothing really happens in some of the smaller cities. But I've had, I've had quite a few conversations with my reps, even in the, in the smaller stations. Um, I've also had quite a bit of turnover in my local reps uh, since I uh, took office in 2016. Uh, many, we have many new representatives in, in many of the cities. And so there's been a lot of training that's been involved where I've uh, personally trained a lot of the local reps. Um, but there's all kinds of issues and questions that come up on a daily basis from the, the newest rep to even the most seasoned rep. Uh, just the other day, one of my most seasoned reps and operations uh, uh, rep out of, uh, out of one of my California cities called me up and said, Hey, I've, I haven't seen this before. Um, you know, I got a question I got to ask. So even some of our most senior reps uh, have questions and they reach out to me and I, uh, there's hardly a day goes by that I'm not talking to at least one of my reps. Do you feel awesome. that Tyler, real, real quick, not to cut you off, Nathan, but do you feel that that's very important that you have constant communication with your reps um, and you being the head of the district and in those cities does, does that does that help you to help the members so you're you know so you're kind of in charge of everybody and the flow of information is coming to you but you're able to get that information back to them so that it helps the members is that very important to you Tyler 
Uh, that's very important to me. And, and I think a, a great example of that, Phoenix, which is one of our biggest stations, we actually had an election for the ramp rep and, and our new ramp rep in Phoenix uh, doesn't have any experience or didn't have any experience being a rep prior to um, uh, being elected into this position. Now, he's, he's got a lot of great energy and he's going to be a great rep for our members in Phoenix. But uh, there's a lot of learning uh, that, that goes along with this. And my job as a district rep is to make sure that every member is represented properly at the local level. Um, so that constant communication is not only necessary, it's extremely vital um, from the newest rep to our most seasoned rep to make sure that everything is being done properly so that uh, any fact-finding meeting or any meeting with management, the reps have the tools that they need to properly represent every member. Mm -hmm. well, well, would you say that, well, since you said that you know, he didn't have a lot of prior experience, would you say that um, pretty much any member could step up as long as, you know, or how, how would you say that if, if uh, for example, if I was wanted to, or if a member wanted to get involved with the union or, or, possibly was was thinking about running to be a uh, station rep how how would you what would you kind of give them as far as advice or how would you let that set up uh any member that wants to get involved i would strongly encourage them to get involved talk to your local rep and say hey i want to you know help out i want to get more involved because there's there's many places at the table of the union mm -hmm. for you to get involved and we definitely have the tools available to train and educate and help people along in their job. And, and yeah, that sounds like a very daunting thing to step into a right. role as a, as a local rep in a large station like Phoenix. But we're going to do everything we can to make sure everybody succeeds in their roles uh, with the union, whether it be a local rep, an alternate local rep, or any other uh, position within the union. Do you think that, um, like, being an alternate rep would probably be the first good step as to becoming a station rep or uh that would that would be a great first step uh however uh that's not a necessary step um, right i mean in, anybody can uh put their name into the hat to become any member in good standing can put their name into the hat to be a local rep and as a district rep it's my job to make sure that um they're properly trained and have all the tools necessary to mm -hmm. properly represent the members in their station you, you just I, you just mentioned i mean cut you off you just mentioned <laughs> good standing what what okay, for those that that don't necessarily know can you give us a brief explanation of what that means uh well a member of good standing is current on their dues uh as well as hasn't had any disciplinary action by a way of a uh, of a board council or i forget mm -hmm. the 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 correct term but uh, there are disciplinary measures that can uh, uh, come to a member if, if they're not, um, you know, doing things that are in the best interest of the union okay. um, or, or and, and the TW International Constitution actually has some things that um, that they uh, point out as things that can be detrimental to the union that if you're, you know, um, if you engage in any of those activities you could be uh put as a member in bad standing and to where you wouldn't be eligible to hold office but uh, uh -huh. currently i am not aware of any member within our local that fits into that category right neither am i neither am i um i see that emory is itching to ask you a question well let's let's pass it on to emory hi uh tyler this is emory out of philly emory marsh out of philly uh, one of the questions I think that, especially for junior agents, is could you speak to about the payroll protection uh, that has been signed and what that might mean for some of them and what do the uh, union see uh, with that? All right. Well, as we're recording this, and, and Emery, thank you for asking that, because the union has actually spent a lot of time and attention uh, to this particular matter, because it's been on the hearts and minds of a lot of our members, uh, especially as Southwest has sent out warn and impact notices to many of our members. Mm -hmm. um, as we are recording this, uh, it was just yesterday that President Trump signed uh, the um, the, the second stimulus package, which included over $900 billion of 
of uh, stimulus money. Included in that is an extension to the PSP or payroll uh, uh, protection, or, or is it P payroll? I forget what it is. Um, payroll protection, I think is how it's called, but it, that's gonna provide uh, billions of dollars to the airline industry. Uh, Southwest in particular is going to receive a big chunk of that money uh, to preserve jobs and to help pay for wages. So we're very excited about the passage of, of that bill because what that means is Gary Kelly, um, if you remember back in October, asked all the unions to take a 10% pay cut. Um, we then engaged in cost savings dis discussions to try and save money to avoid the, the pay cuts. But Bar Gary Kelly from the very beginning said that if there's an extension to the payroll uh, protection program, that uh, all of these talks of furloughs or cost savings would end. Um, so we certainly anticipate the company is going to uh, take furloughs off the table so that no one needs to worry about them for the remainder of 2021. And the union is also preparing to put out a statement by the time anyone's watching this video, um, that information will already be out and be posted on our website. Um, just congratulating um, the work of our, our government to pass this, mm -hmm. the work of all of our members uh, for lobbying their uh, representatives and senators to, to pass this. Um, and I, I think it's good news for uh, our entire union as well as every employee at Southwest Airlines. Yeah, that was yeah and, I, and, I, and I just want to thank you, Tyler, because I know you worked, uh, you did a lot of hard work with the uh, language uh, for negotiating. Um, you, you, you were on that committee, correct, for negotiating what the company was trying to get in, in cost savings. Is that correct? Uh, I was not actually on the cost savings uh, committee. Uh, but I work very closely with the cost savings committee to um, get updates out to the membership. Oh, that, that's correct. You did. Um, I apologize for that, Tyler. You are 100 percent correct. Uh, but you did do the, the, the communication. Uh, you did also help out with the RIF uh, communication for the members that's on the website. I know you had a big chunk in that. And I know we appreciate that as the education committee, as a local, as the board. Uh, like I said, I know you do great work. Um, so like I said, I'm, I'm excited to have you on this podcast. Um, and, and I just have a couple more questions for you. What is the most important thing that you're handling right now? And I know it's probably the PSP, uh, you know, the package and all that. But what, what is the most important thing, in your opinion, that you're handling in your district? Or, or what are you looking forward uh, to working on? Or what are, you, what are you working on at this time? Well, obviously, over the, over the past month, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, uh, over the past month, there's been a great deal of attention to the PSP, RIF questions, um, anything like that. And of course, RIF means reduction in force uh, in our contract. That's Article uh, 15 of our contract, which that's where furloughs and things like that come into play. Uh, but there was a lot of work and attention. Uh, I've done a lot of station visits, um, touch base with just about every one of the cities. Uh, in my district, either uh, via Zoom or in-person station visits. Um, so there was a lot of time and attention to that. With the passage of this new uh, stimulus bill, um, I, I think that kind of eases a lot of tension and a lot of burdens of, of worry for a lot of our members. And so we're very excited about that. Um, where my attention is going to be focusing now is trying to maintain the solidarity that we saw as a union as we were negotiating these cost savings measures with the company because um, I think the solidarity of our members was just overwhelming uh, in telling the company that the 10% pay cuts was just unacceptable or any type of contract concession was unacceptable. And it was just overwhelming uh, the voices of the membership as they were letting their opinion and voices be heard. And I want to try and uh, maintain that solidarity. We have a very big election coming up in a, in a few months where the entire executive board is up for re-election. Our president, vice presidents, uh, recording secretary, treasurer, and all the district reps are up for election. If we can get a strong voter turnout from our membership and have the same solidarity in the voter turnout that we did in standing up for our contract, uh, there'll be no telling what this union will be able to do moving forward, especially as we begin contract negotiations in February. So 
I'm really excited about maintaining that solidarity and, and keeping everybody unified in the, the cause and goals of our union. And I, and I, like I said, I, I, I really always enjoy talking to you, Tyler. You're a very intelligent man. You, you represent your uh, members well in your district. Um, and I know I just got to know you over the last few years. But like I said, with that said and that topic, it, I mean, that's kind of why the Education Committee is here. And that's why they, uh, Mark and Nathan and Emery and Jay and Kyle stepped up, because we want to educate those members. We want to be on board and try to educate and inform and strengthen and bring our members together, you know, with these podcasts. And and I would love to have you again back on another podcast with another topic, uh, because I know you 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 know about arbitrations, you know about arbitrators, how they think, and you're always strong in giving your opinion of of the direction of an arbitrator, what he will, how he will rule on a ruling. Um, and I would love to have you at a future time, you know, maybe sit down with maybe some grievance specialists about arbitrations how it's handled, what it's done, what arbitrators expect or what they think or how they rule. I mean, there's just so much information and, and, and I know this information can educate our members and form our members uh, and give them good quality topics to think about, to talk about in their stations, um, especially to have knowledge, you know, knowledge is power. Um, and with that power, you know, it brings our people together, brings our members together, uh, makes us solid. Um, and, you know, that's that's our whole goal of being a union. You know, um, uh, uh, you know, I know there's a, uh, my old district rep and I used to be an alternate rep. used to always tell me uh, an injustice for one is an injustice for us all. And and we we need to bring our members together. We need to make us strong uh, so that, our, you know, we're only as, as strong as our weakest link. And I know I'm probably kind of rambling, but I mean, yeah, you put a you light a fire, brother. You do. You light a fire. And this is the energy that we need to do. We need to light these fires so our members can just get out and get going, you know, and, and bring this this local uh, to a force, to, to a, a platform, to some strength that, that's never been seen before. And like I said, I'm excited, brother. I'm excited. I know the education committee is excited. Yeah, definitely. And like I said, I, I, I thank you for being on. And I know I don't, I don't mean to cut anybody off, but has anybody else got anything else no, for, just, for uh, Mr. Clough? You know, because I, like I said, he's... Very, very smart guy. I, uh, I second everything Juan said. He said a lot, so I second all of that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> but, well, well, th 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 thank you. Le and l let me say this. Maybe you can edit this in one way or the other. But um, Juan, thank you very much for those uh, very generous words. And I do think they are extremely generous. Uh, yeah, we could talk for hours on arbitrations. That is one of the things uh, about this job as being a district rep that has uh, fascinated me the most. Uh, and something that got me uh, motivated to be a, uh, be in this position more so than anything else was the arbitration aspect of it and being in front of arbitrators and fighting for the members. And, and yeah, I agree wholeheartedly, Juan. One saying that I've, uh, I, I think I came up with it, but I, I can't say <laughs> for sure. But I like to tell people the union um, uh, protects the whole by fighting for the one. Um, and that's, that's something that I've, I've said is, um, when people, you know, why are you fighting for that guy? Why are you fighting for that guy? Well, fighting for that guy over there is also protecting you. Um, and so that's the mindset that I've always had, but, um, I'm fascinated with arbitrations. I'd love to talk with you some more about that. Uh, but thank you so much for this opportunity. It's been great. And I hope this has been informative to anybody listening. Yeah, definitely has. I'm Definitely. And I'd just like thank to say thank you, thank you, Tyler, for what you do, and I appreciate what you do. Thank sure, you. definitely. Likewise. Well, Tyler, thank you so much again for joining us. I really appreciate your time and effort, um, what you do for the local and everyone else. Um, um, Juan, do you want to want to close it out on us? Yeah, I, and brothers and sisters, I, I just want to thank you guys again for listening, participating. Uh, we are trying our best as an education committee to – uh, bring you topics and information that are going to educate, empower, and strengthen our, our members and our local. Uh, and again, I just want to thank Tyler Clough. Uh, he does a great service for our local. Uh, he has a lot of knowledge. He brings a lot of good uh, characteristics. Um, and just, just the information he brings. Um, we don't always agree, uh, but he, he, he's, 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 he's there for the members. I guarantee that. And like I said, I thank you. And I thank you for the education that you bring us because you've helped us, the education committee, a lot. Uh, we thank you. We're indebted to you. And like I said, this is about bringing our, our members 
uh, together, making us stronger. And again, brothers and sisters of TW Local 555, we want to thank you again uh, for listening to this podcast.